next one is uh, uh, Amity University. So if you are ready, please start. Namaste, good morning, and good afternoon to everyone. It is my immense pleasure to represent Amity University and my country, India, on such a great platform. Thank you, KG University, for giving us such a great opportunity, and we promise to do our best. To begin with, Amity Institute of Applied Sciences is divided into four departments, chemistry, physics, mathematics, and statistics. And today, we are the team from chemistry and physics department. Dr. Ashokke Chauhan, a renowned educationist, industrialist, and philanthropist, is the founder president of MIT Education Group. Grounded to his dreams, he has always believed in the policy of lending one eye on vision and another on implementation. His leadership strategies have transformed MIT Education Group into a sustainable, value-driven organization set to transform the education landscape of our country, India. Atal Chauhan has been the president of Amity Education Group since 1994 and chancellor of Amity University, Noida. He has completed his engineering from University College London, holds an accounting and finance degree from the London School of Economics and Political Science, and a degree in international business from Frankfurt International School. Our vice chancellor is Professor Dr. Balvinder Shukla, she is on advisory board of many companies and is a member of several professional bodies. Dr. Shukla is a strategist, an institution builder, an inspirational leader, and a quality networker. She is a recipient of various prestigious awards and honors. Professor Dr. Sunita Ratan is the director and professor of Amity Institute of Applied Sciences, Amity University, Nanda. She has a rich experience of 25 years in academic and research. She has also published more than 65 research papers and reputed journals and presented around 70 papers in national and international conferences. She is also the Fellow of Royal Society of Chemistry, London. Our mentor, Dr. Kumar Rakesh Ranjan, had been a pillar of support throughout this project. He has provided valuable inputs to make this scientific endeavor a success. Now, chemistry group members will introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. I am Aksha Gulyani. I am pursuing my master's in chemistry in specialization organic chemistry. I am a critical thinker, flexible, motivator, and an active listener. My interest lies in natural products, synthetic chemistry, and nanochemistry. I like to play badminton, volleyball, and also I like to do cooking in my free time. Hi everyone, my name is Akansha Taneja. I'm doing my Master's of Sciences in Chemistry with Organic as a Specialization. I am flexible, creative, and a goal-oriented person. Some of my interests are in polymer chemistry and nanochemistry. In my leisure, I like to devote my time doing quilling, doodling, and art and draw. Hi, I'm Kaushiki Chatterjee, pursuing Master's of Science in Chemistry. My passion is teaching science to school-going children to build them as global citizens with scientific temper. Hi, everyone. My name is Caroline Rye, pursuing Master of Science in Applied Chemistry. I'm adaptable, task-oriented, and team player. I have keen interest in polymer chemistry, and I'm currently doing a project on hydrophilic polyurethane imide. I like to click pictures of nature and also love to bake cakes for leisure. Hi, I'm Kajal Gaur. I'm currently pursuing my master's in applied chemistry. I'm a hardworking, disciplined, and goal-oriented person. My interest lies in medicinal chemistry and green chemistry. I love to do yoga, gymming, sports, art, and craft, cooking in my leisure time. Thank you. Hi, I'm Astha Sharma. I'm currently pursuing my master's of science degree uh, in applied chemistry. I'm an inquisitive, creative, and task-oriented person. My interest lies in organic, analytical, and polymer branch of chemistry. 
I'm a freelance photographer, a trained singer, a self-taught ukulele player, and an avid reader. Thank you. Well, let us give you all a beautiful tour of a beautiful university, that is Amity University, through a short video. Amity University was established in 2005 by an act of the state legislature of Uttar Pradesh. At Amity, we are passionate about grooming leaders who are not only thorough professionals but also good human beings with values and sanskars. Amity University Noida has been accredited by the National Accreditation and Assessment Council with grade A+. Amity is a research-driven university with more than 300 high-tech laboratories available. The central library is more like integrated knowledge center stocked with over 2 lakh books in total. Amity also has a community radio station as the ASCO studio. Amity Institute of Applied Sciences was established with a vision to be a center of excellence for physical and chemical sciences. The main thrust and philosophy behind the establishment of this institute is to promote a depth in undergraduate and postgraduate education. Also, hostel accommodation is there around the clock security with the medical facility available on the campus. With solar panels all around, it is an eco-friendly campus. Sports form an important aspect of a student's development, from increasing concentration levels and working as a team to inculcating a winning spirit. Sports help students to build a strong character. Adventure activities are also conducted by trained staff of National Adventure Foundation, assisted by Amity training staff. The training area for the camp is in the close vicinity of the tented accommodation. The activities conducted are map reading, adventure training, trekking, etc. as per the program. Therefore, excellence is doing ordinary things extraordinary well at Amity. Thank you everyone. Now I would like to invite the physics department to introduce 
their team members one by one. Good afternoon, professors. Hello to all my fellow uh, students and hope you are doing well today. My team and I representing the Department of Physics at MIT University under the guidance of Professor Deepak Tripathi, our team is doing profess. My team members are as shown on the screen. These are my team members, Aditya, Nikita, Aditya, Chanti, and Rajiv. Now I like to introduce myself. I am Priyanki, representing my team. My main interest is in the quantum nuclear physics are my special interest and exploring the topics of special relativity has caught my interest from an early age. I like to read books and explore new things as a hobby to feed the curious side of my brain. I hope. You will find a well researched presentation and about our uh, information about our introduction well legal. Now I would like to uh, invite my next team. Oh, uh, hi, myself Kumar Aditya, uh, pursuing the MSc Applied Physics from Amity University. First of all, I'm very grateful to my faculties uh, for letting me on this opportunity. About myself, my interest lies in uh, nanoscience, as I've done several projects in this field, so developed an interest from there. Also in quantum optics and cosmology, because it intrigues me a lot. And some of the interest also lies in electronics. Apart from academics, I like to read novels, articles, newsletters, anything, and also like to play chess. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Nikita Tiwari. First of all, I would like to thank my university and Sakura program for giving me this amazing opportunity to speak in front of you. Uh, my, the, the field which attracts me the most in physics is astrophysics as I want to know the cosmos beyond our own planet. Uh, to, uh, to know more about the celestial object, how physics involved in them, where we came from and where we are going and how physics works under the conditions which are impossible to recreate on Earth. I believe my biggest strength is my quick learning skill along with good listening skill. And in my leisure time, I love to paint. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It is an immense pleasure for me to participate in this prestigious Sakura program. My name is Aditya and I am representing Amity University and my country India. I am in the mas a master's degree in physics. I am interested in the area of high energy physics and particle physics. Studies in high energy physics attracts great interest to investigate the microscopic world and to understand the basic nature and the link between particle physics and astrophysics. My other hobbies are reading novels and watching movies. Thank you. First of all, good morning to all of you. I would like to thank you for giving me this lovely opportunity and it's my pleasure to introduce myself. My name is Shanki Rana from physics department, Amity University, Noida, India. I would like to talk about, I would like to talk about my interest. My interest is in astrophysics because astronomy makes an especially a large contribution in formal and informal education, giving the small number of research astronomers. And technology transfer and spin off from astronomy have important application in medicine, uh, industry defense, environmental monitoring, and uh, consumer products. By side, I have a, I have a huge, huge interest in uh, nanophotonics because it's concerned in investigations uh, into buildings, manipulating and characterization optically active nano, nanostructures with a view of creating a new capability in instrumentation for the nanoscale, chemical, and bio, biomedical sensing. On the other hand, I have some hobbies like playing football, uh, singing, reading, and running, and I'm a good athlete also. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Rajesh Kumar from Amity University. And before starting my introduction part, I would like to say thanks Sakura program and Amity University for giving us such a wonderful opportunity. And I am here to talk about my strength, interest and hobbies. So basically my course is MSc Applied Physics. The strength which I have developed in on cells that providing good explanation, patience to achieve goal and good listening capacity. 
For me, interesting fields are optical field, thermodynamics, and the quantum mechanics. In, uh, but I spend a lot of time in optical field. Basically, I'm doing research on the photophonic receptor in which I'm doing the research. How can we transfer the sound energy in the form uh, with the help of electromagnetic wave? On the other hand, I'm also doing on the research of thermodynamic field in which I'm doing research, the chemical potential of the smell. And my hobbies are teaching and reading new innovative ideas in science field. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for taking out your precious time and listening to us. We really hope that at the end of this Sakura program, we'll be learning definitely new things from all the participants throughout the globe. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, okay, then the uh, next group is a BNE group of colleges. So if we are ready, please start. A very warm welcome, everyone. Uh, good, uh, good morning. I'm Anjali Pandit from Biani Group of Colleges, India. At first, I would like to thank Kwansai Gakkyun University for providing us this opportunity to participate at international platform where we could interconnect, exchange, and gather knowledge on sustainable energy and biodiversity. Before beginning with the presentation, I would like to share a few words for my country, India. The Republic of India is a country in South Asia. It is the seventh largest country by area, the second most populous country, and has the most popular democracy in the world. India's rise to power has led to speculation and expectations about how it will change the global order. India is huge, with more than 1.3 billion people and on track to become the world's third largest economy. India has a publicly funded higher education system that is the third largest in the world. It's our pride to share that India is listed 12th among the biodiverse, mega biodiverse nations in the world and ha has a BioD score of 0.46 on the diversity index. Biani Group of Colleges is a group of educational institutes in Jaipur, Rajasthan. The college is run by the Trust Biani Shikshan Samiti, a non-profit organization working for technical education and women em empowerment in the Indian state of Rajasthan. Biani Group of Colleges was founded by Dr. Rajiv Biani, Dr. Sanjay Biani, and Dr. Manish Biani in the year 2007. It is accredited A plus by the National Assessment and Accreditation Council of India. Back in 2005, Biani Group of Colleges started with zero. And today it has its three branches in different regions of Jaipur running several academic programs. The main mission behind was society development through technical education and women empowerment and had an approach of integrated academic collaboration with industry and society. Here at Biani Group of Colleges, we have different academic and training cells. Also, we have two startups, Biani Biosolutions Private Limited in India and Bioseeds Corporation in Japan. Apart from that, we have an NGO as well, that is Jaipur Rural Health and Development Trust. These are the various departments in Biani Group of Colleges. We are proud of our Bianans for being awarded the gold medal by University of Rajasthan and Rajasthan Technical University in the year 2020 and 21. The two startups, that is Biani Biosolutions and the Bioseeds Corporations are working together with a mission of strengthening healthy environment and healthy lives. Since 2006, Biani in Japan have strengthened their relationship and are working together to attain the mission of encouraging the spirit of research, innovation, and cultural exchange, and have a vision of interdisciplinary collaboration beyond borders. At present, we have several partners in Japan, including Saitama University, Akita Perfectual University, Jazz University, and Kyushu University. Also, we have Alfresa, Biodevice Technology, Bioseeds, Tanaka Kikinzoku Group, and Velcro. 
we have several academic uh, activities between Japan and Biani, such as the India's Japan Academy Conference BICOM, which is an annual event conducted in the month of September, October, and aims at building relationship by inviting academics from Japan. We have several student placements in Japan as well, like for short term, weeks to months as an internship program or long term like ME, PhD and postdoc programs. There are various internship programs for Japanese students as well, like traditional culture exchange of food, attire, yoga and art. And we also provide industrial and historic site tours. At present, we have several ongoing bilateral projects, including COVID project with AMID, PHC project with Kyushu University, HIV project with Kyoto University, and New Guard project with JUST. The most recent BICON was celebrated in 2021. It was the 16th anniversary of the India-Japan Fest with, with uh, the theme of recreating higher education in the post-pandemic world. Till date, we have 95 faculties from Japan who have visited BGC and 11 faculties from BGC have visited Japan. If we talk about the student exchange, exchange programs, we have Indian students, that is 73 Indian students that have visited Japan and 63 Japanese students have visited G BGC. There are several placements in Jap Japan as well, like in different universities, such as Saitama Universities, University, University of Tokyo, Jais University and Toyama Perfectual University. These are some glimpses of the internship program that was organized for the Japanese students. I would like to mention here that Biani Group of Colleges also participated in the KGU Sakura Science Online Exchange Meeting in the year 2021, where eight faculties and eight students and four faculties actively participated and had a talk on what to challenge. It is again a proud moment for Biani Group of Colleges that it was selected an approved sending organization from the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, Government of India. Now, I would like to mention the, about the RICA test, that is RNA isothermal co-assisted and coupled amplification test, which is the current ongoing bilateral project on COVID-19 testing. It, is, it aims at the easy, rapid, and simple method of testing, detecting the COVID-19 virus by a simple format of sample in and answer out. One of our greatest achievements till date is the visit of Japanese ambassador, that is HE. KZ Hiramatsu to Biani Group of Colleges in the year 2016. The purpose of this visit was to have a healthy interactive session with the students and faculties of BGC who have been active members of Indo-Japan Exchange Program. Japan Ministry of External Affairs recognized our efforts in building the re friendly relations between India and Japan and awarded the Foreign Minister's Commendation for the year 2017. Now, I would like to mention our teams that are participating this year in the KGU Sakura Science Online Exchange Meeting on the theme of sustainable energy and biodiversity. Here, we have two teams where the team first would speak on biodiversity conservation strategies and patterns in India, while the team two will give review of the present status and future prospects of sustainable energy in India. At first, I would request Ms. Bhumika Shikhaut Nam to begin her introduction. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Kargi Dubey. I did my graduation by technology from Biani Girls College that is affiliated to the University of Rajasthan, India. Currently, I am pursuing a master's degree in biotechnology at Biani Girls College. I preferred biotechnology because of the interest in biology and research, and it also generates a curiosity about wide range of events in the world from micro to micro. It helps to improve my practical knowledge and laboratory skills. My interest in research area is microbiology and nanotechnology. Aside from that, I am excited to be a part of Sakura Science Program and thanks for pro providing me such a wonderful opportunity to interact and share knowledge. Over to Ms. Pooja. 
Hello everyone. My name is Pooja Agarwal. Currently, I'm pursuing Masters in Biotechnology from Biani Girls College, India. I opt for biotechnology since this field fascinates me and I'm deeply inclined towards this field and the research work. My major research interest areas are environmental biotechnology, nanotechnology, and microbiology. Apart from this, I'm very excited to be a part of Sakura Science Program where we can exchange and discuss our ideas how to conserve biodiversity and come up with a better solution to conserve biodiversity. Thank you. Over to Ms. Akshita Jangit. Hello everyone. I am Akshita Jangit from Biani Girls College, India. I am pursuing undergraduation in biotechnology. The blend of biology and technology has fascinated me since the starting of my school time. My research area of interest is in recombinant DNA technology and cell biology. I am glad to be a part of this online Sakura science program as it provides me an international platform to interact and exchange knowledge. Now over to Ms. Vanshika Sharma. Hello everyone, I'm Anshika Sharma from Biani Girls College, India. I'm currently pursuing my undergraduation in biotechnology. I'm inclined towards this field as it has provided me a station where I could actually implement what I study. My research area of interest alive in microbiology, especially bacteriology and RDT. My journey begins with these fields with learning the basic lab techniques and measures. And now I am in the state of their implementation in my training and research works. I feel so grateful to be a part of this KG Online Science, Sakura Science program as it has provided me an international platform to interact and grab knowledge from other researchers here. Thank you. Now I would like to welcome Dr. Alok So to give his word of introduction. Thank you, Mansika. Hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce myself at this online global platform. My name is Dr. Alok Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Biani Girls College, Jaipur, India. My research area are photonic, photonics, waveguide devices, and slow light of photonic crystal. My research focuses on theoretical modeling of optical devices based on photonic crystal. The optical devices have many applications in optical communication network system and optical integrator circuit. Thank you. Over to Dr. Mukta Jain. Thank you, sir. My name is Dr. Mukta Jain, Department of Chemistry. I'm working as an assistant professor at Bayani Group of Colleges. I'm welcome you all again in this online international Sakura exchange program. My core research area is in synthesis characterization and study biotoxicity of sulfonamide amine, silicon fourth, tin fourth, and manganese second complexes. My area of research interest are solvent-free green synthesis and nanosynthesis. I am delighted and thankful to organizers of this event, local management, and our R&D director, Dr. Manish Bayani, sir, for giving me such a great opportunity to participate in this event. Thank you and have a nice day. Now over to Ishika Agarwal. Thank you so much, ma'am. A very warm welcome to one and you all present here in this virtual meeting. My name is Ishika Agarwal from the Biani Girls College, Jaipur, India, which is affiliated to University of Rajasthan and pursuing undergraduate from Biani Girls College. Currently, I am working on molecular characterization of dermatophytes and antifungal activity of medicinal plants against dermatophytes. I am very thankful to KGU to provide me an immense pleasure to present myself in front of you all in this International Sakura Science Online Exchange Program 2022. Thank you. Over to Ms. Anchal Shikhawat. Thank you, Ishika Agarwal. A very warm welcome to one and all present here in this virtual meeting. My name is Anchal Shikhawat. Currently, I am pursuing undergraduation in biology from Biani Group of Colleges affiliated with University of Rajasthan, India. The field of biology has fascinated me from the starting of my school time. This is the incentive for me choosing biology as my career shaper. My research interest is in animal physiology. I would like to thank KGU for organizing this virtual meeting regarding Sakura Science Online Exchange Program 
as it has provided me an international platform to interact and exchange knowledge. Thank you. Over to Paridhi Nyati. Thank you, Achal. First of all, thank you for giving me this opportunity to introduce myself. I am Paridhi Nyati from Biani Group of Colleges, Jaipur, Rajasthan, India. I am presently pursuing my undergraduation in biotechnology and my interest of area is medical biotechnology. I am passionate about learning and developing new skills in my working environment area. I am delighted to be a part of Sakura Science Program. Thank you. Over to Ms. Vandana. Thank you, Ms. Paridhi. A very warm welcome to all present here. Firstly, I'm very grateful to be a part of this conference and especially this project. And for giving me this huge opportunity, I want to thank Sakura Science Program and KGU. I'm Vandana Saini. I'm an undergraduate student from Biani Girls College, Jaipur, India. I'm currently pursuing my bachelor's from science department. Since from very young age, I'm interested in research work and my area of interest is bioinformatics. So here I am on the way of fulfilling my dreams. This was all about me. Thank you so much for giving me yours. At the end, I would like to thank Kwansai Gakkan University and Dr. Manish Vyani so for providing this opportunity to nourish our and open ourselves to new thoughts and ideas. Looking ahead for fruitful weeks. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Biani Group of Colleges. And all the self-introductions have been finished and I'm very impressed by unique introduction of each university. And uh, let's take 10 minutes breaks. I think it's time, maybe one minute later. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think it's time to uh, start the uh, session. Okay, so Does everybody come back? Okay. Okay, uh, let's start the final session of today. Uh, <coughs> two uh, lectures about the sustainable energy and the bio biodiversity will be given. Uh, if you have uh, uh, questions, please use the chat to write your questions. After the talk, the lecturer, uh, lecturers will check the chat and answer your questions. The first talk is given by Akihiko Fujiwara, and the uh, title of his talk is Development of Materials and Devices at KGU for Sustainable Energy. Okay, uh, Professor Fujiwara, if we are ready, please start. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay, thank you for kind introduction. I'm Akishiko Fujiwara. Oh, okay, first of all, so good morning, participants from India, and good afternoon, participants from others. So uh, my name is uh, Akihiko Fujiwara from the Department of Nanotechnology for Sustainable Energy. Uh, in this talk, I'll be talking about development of materials and devices at Kwansei Gaku University for Sustainable Energy. Okay, I now understand the uh, background or interesting or the major of your uh, participant is uh, widely distributed. Therefore, I think I will not touch with in detail of my research, but uh, I distribute the basis relating to my research. Okay, I hope you enjoy my talk. Let me start with our department. Department of Nanotechnology for Sustainable Energy. It is completely different from the conventional department, such as Department of Physics, Department of Chemistry, Department of Biology. They are subject-oriented organizations. On the other hand, our department is an issue-oriented organization. Kwasegak University, we also have Another issue-oriented department, the department, Department of Applied Chemistry for Environment. They are completely different to each other, but they are they both, they are very important. So in the subject-oriented organization, curiosity-driven research tends to be conducted. It is relating to the forecasting style. 
drawing the future based on current research trend. On the other hand, in the issue-oriented department, mission-oriented research is mainly conducted. It is relating to the backcasting style, looking backward from a desirable future or the planned future to the strategy of research. Therefore, direction is completely different. So in the curiosity-driven research, we start from the present, current in, uh, curiosity or the current research trend to future. But uh, uh, in the backcasting style, so we first set the future, and then going back to uh, present. Okay. The typical example of the backcasting style is sustainable development goals, so-called SDGs. So we first set the goals and then we discuss what we can do for these goals. I think I don't have to introduce the SDGs. So you, I think you know the SDGs very well. So it is a collection of 70 interlinked global goals. And our department is Department of Nanotechnology for Sustainable Energy. Therefore, our department can mainly contribute to the goal seven, ensure access, uh, ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Okay, what we can see here is challenges and the solutions of the goal seven are uh, provided by United Nations. Here, it should be mentioned that the goal seven is not limited to the development of the renewable energy, but the reduction of energy consumption or the efficient use of energy are also important. Okay, therefore, we focus on the energy cycle for realizing the low carbon society which includes the creation, storage, transmission, and the utilization. This is the energy cycle. Okay, for energy creation, three faculty members conducted the research on this topic, catalysis, fuel cells, and solar cells. For energy storage, hydrogen storage, and the batteries, uh, rechargeable batteries are uh, investigated by two faculty members. For energy transmission, the superconducting materials, devices, and the systems are very important. Then the two faculty members uh, uh, investigate this kind of research. Okay, for efficient use of energy, devices are very important. The first topic is the power semiconductors. Okay, you know, semiconductor devices are widely used in PCs in your computer and the mobile phones, where the semiconductor devices deal with a small current. But the recently, so semiconductor device can deal with high current, such as the current of the motors for vehicles, electric vehicles, and so on. Therefore, power semiconductor is now the very hot topics and very important research for future. Okay, in this topic, so for, for processors are uh, uh, investigated uh, uh, many kinds of the, uh, power semiconductor materials. We also developed the new materials on the devices for next generation uh, semiconductor devices. Okay, one professor conducted the research on the magnetic materials. Magnetic material also uh, is also important for the electric vehicles, which can be used uh, Magnetic materials can be used for the efficient uh, motors. One professor conduct the uh, theoretical uh, 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 material design for all materials in the uh, cycles. Two faculty members also conduct the uh, power system control. Therefore, we our department contributed to the energy cycle from the material to the systems, okay. Therefore, we can cover the almost all things about the uh, 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 sustainable energy. 
Okay, today the first topic is uh, novel semiconductor devices, which is relating to the display. Okay, demand of IoT and ICT societies for displays has increased more and more. For example, small and flexible displays, 4K, 8K, uh, high precision large displays, and uh, 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 transparent display, for example, the in front of the refrigerator in the store. Okay, all of you use displays every day. For example, the TV systems, PC uh, displays, and also the mobile phones. But uh, some, of, some of you may not know the operation principle of display. Then let me introduce the operation principle of display. Here is an example, the liquid crystal display. Liquid crystal display is widely used in the uh, TV systems and the PC computers and the uh, mobile phones. Okay, there are two polarizing filter. One is a vertical polarizing filter. Here, only the light with the vertically polarized polarization can pass through. Second one is a horizontal polarizing filter. So only the horizontally uh, polarized light can pass through this filter. Okay, between the polarizing filter, there is a liquid crystal layer with a long molecule. So in this side, molecule is vertically aligned. But uh, on the other hand, this side, the horizontally aligned, the structure is a helical structure. The molecule is gradually twisted to, uh, from here to here. When you uh, emit the light from the back side, only the, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. only the light with the uh, vertical polarization can pass through this filter and through passing through the uh, uh, liquid crystal layer, the direction of the polarization becomes the uh, horizontal. Then the light can pass through the second filter. Then you can see the light. Here, we have the two electrodes with the switch. When you turn on the switch here, the uh, electric field is applied to the liquid crystal then the molecule is aligned along this direction. In this case, the light with the vertical polarization, the polarized, uh, okay, polarization direction doesn't change uh, through the liquid crystal. Therefore, the, after, the, after passing through the liquid crystal, still the uh, polarization direction is vertical. Then the light cannot pass through the second filter. So you cannot see the light. It looks like dark. This is the operation principle of the crystal, uh, 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 liquid crystal display. Okay. When you use the color display, we have the three color filter for one color. Okay. When you turn on, turn off the, all of the pixels, all of the light can pass through the second filter. Uh, red, green, and blue, then you, you feel the color is white. When you turn on all of the pixels, no light can pass through the second filter. Therefore, you feel this is a dark or the black. When you turn on only the blue pixels, red and green light can pass through the second filter. Then you feel the combination of the green and the red, therefore you feel the color is yellow. Looks like this. So you can control the uh, intensity of each light by changing the switch. Then we can control the color of the light here. This is the operation princi principle of the color display. Okay, here the, we have the switching device for each in each pixel. Therefore, one of the key components is switching device. It is a transistor. Therefore, let me move to the transistors. The, uh, 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 
schematic drawing of the transistor is looks like this. So the semiconductor material is uh, uh, connected to the two electrodes. So here is a circuit. And this circuit is put on the insulator. And back side of the insulator, uh, there is another electrode called gate. When you apply the voltage here, so uh, even though the, uh, you, you apply the gate, gate voltage here, because of the high resistance of the semiconductor, there is no current. Therefore, this is a, a switch off state. When you apply the voltage here, because the structure of this region is looks like capacitor, therefore, by application of this uh, voltages, the positive and negative charges are accumulated like capacitor. Then this negative charge uh, 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 can flow by this uh, voltage. This is a switch on state. Therefore, the current, amount of the current in this circuit can be controlled by this voltage. This is a, a operation principle of the thin film transistor. Here is the off state, the on state, here is on state. The key figure of merit is, I introduced the two key figures of merit. One is so-called mobility. So here is almost proportional to the uh, 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 current amount of the current, current intensity here. So high current is high mobility. For liquid crystal display, the requirement is 10 square centimeter per volt per second. So 10 is important uh, 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 value. Okay. Another uh, figure of merit is on off ratio. This is a, a ratio of the on current, current on is current of on states and the current of off states. Here is a, a switching performance. For liquid crystal display, 10 to the fixed fix or more. Uh, is required. So therefore, uh, I will discuss 10 and the 10 to the fifth uh, 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 later, okay. I want to also introduce the type of T thin film transistors, P type and negative, uh, N type. Okay, here, the negative charges are accumulated here because of the uh, uh, direction of the voltage is, looks like this. In this case, the carrier is negative charge. Therefore, we call N type, negative type. In this case, charge carrier is electron. When you apply the voltage opposite directions, positive charges are accumulated here and the negative charges are accumulated here. So, Positive charge is usually the lack of electrons. It, called, it is called hole. In this case, charge carrier is positive. Therefore, we call positive type or P type. Okay, so therefore there are two types, uh, L type and the P type. Both are the, just a switching device, but the, a uh, combination of the N type P type is very important for application. For example, so CMOS combination of the P type and the N type thin film transistors are uh, used for the logic circuit in PCs and mobile phones. Also, CMOS image sensor is used for digital camera. In all the time, the digital camera use uh, adapted to the uh, CCD uh, image sensor, but uh, recently CMOS image sensor is used for digital camera. Another application is PL junction. When you combine the N type semiconductor and the P type semiconductor, we can make the diode or the light emitting diode or the solar cells. Therefore, uh, development of the N type P-type semiconductor materials, semiconducting materials, or the semiconducting devices are very important. Okay, so let's go back to the display. From the consumer's perspective, high performance and many functions 
and the uh, reduction of energy consumption during operations are important. But for sustainable development, uh, in addition to this, reduction of energy and the materials consumption at the production process is also important. Okay, therefore, we try to develop the new uh, fabrication method. So far, C film transistors have been uh, fabricated by physical vapor deposition, such as the sputtering, laser pulse deposition, and the thermal uh, evaporation. In this case, we use the vacuum. So the target material, which will form the thin films, and the substrate is put into the vacuum chamber and evacuated by vacuum system. In this case, the formed fabricated thin film has the high quality, shows the high quality, and the uh, devices fabricated by this method shows the high performance, but uh, uh, it costs, uh, it, it, it is very costly, and we cannot fabricate the large scale devices because we need to put the all of materials put into the uh, vacuum chambers. Okay. On the other hand, solution processes have many uh, 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 advantages. So efficient use of materials. So please imagine that all of the ink is, can be used for used by inkjet printing. In the case of the physical vapor deposition, evaporated materials sometimes stick on the wall of the chambers and also uh, some of the deposited material is removed by for, for the patterning. Therefore, uh, the many uh, raw materials are wasted. But uh, uh, in the case of the inkjet printing, uh, all the materials are used for the uh, patterning. Okay, low energy consumption because we just use the uh, uh, inkjet printer instead of the vacuum systems. Another advantage is the precise control of composition. So we can just control the uh, 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 composition of the uh, solutions. Therefore, very easy to precisely control the uh, 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 composition of the uh, pattern materials. Also, when you have the uh, very large inkjet printer, we can make the large area devices. Only the one drawback is the quality. So in general, the devices fabricated by solution method is shows the low performance, although the are uh, very uh, advantage in the cost and the scales. Therefore, when we can fabricate the relatively high performance devices, the solution process devices can be applied for the commercial products. Okay, so our goal is all printed electronics. Here is a, a, just an a, a example. So the uh, circuit for displays is uh, printed by inkjet printer. In this case, so we don't need the costly facility and we don't waste the materials. But uh, there are uh, two issues. One is materials for solution processing. So choice of the materials is very important. Another one is the additional factor for a solution processing. Okay, let me start with the materials. Actually, solution process silicon thin film transistors was uh, reported by Japan Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, JAIST. So JAIST is collaborated with uh, uh, BRE uh, College of uh, 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 BRE Colleges. Okay. So, but the uh, uh, raw material, start material of the silicon is very unstable and uh, very expensive. Therefore, the solution process silicon TFTs are not appropriate for the commercial products. The requirement for the material is a solubility to solvent and the oxidation resistance during drying process. For the solubility, 
So organic materials are very appropriate because organic molecules can be easily solved into the solvent. But uh, after patterning, we need to dry the patterns. During this drying process, organic materials tend to be oxidized. Therefore, uh, organic semiconductors doesn't have the oxidation resistance after uh, patterning during the drying process. Therefore, we are interested in the oxide semiconductors. In this case, oxide cannot be solved into the solvent, but a uh, uh, metal complex can be solved into the uh, solvent. And after patterning, we can uh, make the uh, heat treatment for oxidation. Therefore, we are interested in the se oxide semiconductors. Okay, so another issue is uh, additional factor in uh, 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 solution processing. Okay, so far, when we use the uh, physical vapor deposition, we don't have to uh, think about the matching between the raw materials and the substrate. But uh, in the case of the solution processing, wettability is very important. So please imagine that the non-wetting condition, we cannot make the films on the substrate. So it looks like this. Therefore, for making the uniform film, wetting is very important. So therefore, a combination of the materials and the substrate is very important. So in future, we need to pattern the uh, 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 materials, but uh, in this case, much more complicated. Therefore, I don't touch with this uh, patterning, uh, pattern, pattern the film in this talk. So I, I focus on the uniform film. Okay, two types of matching. So one is polar solution or polar solvent on the hydrophilic substrate, and the other is non-polar solution on the hydrophobic substrate. Okay, here, yeah, this one and this one. Okay, we can control the surface characteristics, hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity. So when we deal the substrate with the NaOH, we can make the uh, hydrophilic substrate, uh, hydrophilic surface. Okay, on the other hand, when we treat it with the eight so-called HMDS, the surface characteristics become the uh, hydrophobic. Therefore, we can control the surface characteristics. Okay. So let me move to let me move to the, our uh, experiments. So first, we try to make the N-type TFT fabrication on hydrophobic substrate. Therefore, we need to make the non-polar solution. So I don't discuss or to introduce details of the materials, but uh, uh, we put the raw materials into the non-polar solvent and steered and filter. For hydrophobic substrate, we deal the substrate with HMDS. And then the filter, uh, filtered solution is put onto the uh, substrate and spin coated and dried and uh, form the uh, solid thin film by annealing. After that, we fabricate the devices. In this case, Two electrodes on the uh, semiconductor uh, films are evaporated by vacuum uh, physical vapor deposition. So here is a, a physical vapor deposition system. Uh, we use a physical vapor uh, deposition procedure. Okay, so please see the uh, movie. Because uh, our devices are very small, we cannot contact the uh, electrode by our hand. Therefore, we use uh, pr probers. So here is a very small tips on the, uh, on the uh, devices. So it looks like this. Then we contacted the probes by microscope, under the microscope, and then measure the device performance. So I introduced the uh, uh, switching performance, uh, schematic switching performance before. Here is the off state and here is on state. So very nice on off switching characteristics uh, uh, was observed. Okay, here is the result. 
In the case of the N-type TFT on hydrophobic substrate, in this case, we use the uh, indium silicon oxide thin film layers with the uh, aluminum uh, electrode. In this case, mobility is much, much smaller than the uh, requirement, 10 square centimeter per volt per second, but the on-off ratio is very close to the requirement, hence to the field state. Okay, next we tried to the end time TFT fabrication on hydrophilic substrate. The uh, process is the same, but the uh, uh, raw materials are only only the raw materials and the treatment are the different, but the processes are almost the same. Okay, so we use a polar solution on hydrophobic, uh, hydrophilic substrate treated with the NaOH. Okay, in this case, we succeeded in fabricating the two types of semiconductors. So indium silicon oxide system and the zinc oxide system. In both cases, we succeeded in the uh, operation of the uh, uh, TFT device. But uh, in this case, so mobility is very close to the requirement, 10, but the uh, operations are very small. And zinc oxide case, the mobility and the on ratio is much, much smaller than the requirement. So these are the highest values uh, currently uh, obtained highest values. Therefore, we need to improve the uh, mobility and on off ratio by optimizing the uh, processes and the materials. So our highest mobility is almost 10, and I, our highest mobility uh, shown before is almost 10 to the fifth, but uh, uh, both, both are not coexisted. Therefore, we try to uh, achieve uh, 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 succeed in the uh, device, which show both the uh, mobility and off ratio uh, 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 exceed the requirements. Okay. So next trial was the P-type TFT fabrication on hydrophilic substrate. Okay. This time also the uh, material is uh, different, but our processes are the same. Okay. Looks like this. We also succeeded in fabricating the P-type TFT on hydrophilic substrate. In this case, copper oxide layer with the gold electrode. So the mobility and the on-off ratio is not so high. And my, now my student try to improve both the mobility and the on-off ratio. But uh, okay, so far we succeeded in fabricating the P type and L type TFTs by solution processing. This is a very important uh, achievement. Okay, next try, trial is uh, printing electrodes. As I explained, during the fabrication process, we use the physical depo vapor deposition process for uh, forming the uh, two electrodes. Then now we try to uh, make the solution process uh, of the uh, elect two electrodes. Now we adapted the P.PSS polymer uh, conductors by using uh, the inkjet like uh, dispenser, which is similar to the uh, inkjet printer. So we drop the P.PSS dot by dot. Okay, please see. Okay, by by a, by a, a few ten seconds, we can draw the uh, 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 one electrode. Then, by repeating these processes, we can make the many many uh, electrodes. So, one pair of the electrode can be used for the device C film transistors like this. In the case of the vacuum process, we need uh, uh, a few hours for forming the uh, two electrodes. But uh, in this case, we don't need uh, so, so long time. So therefore, uh, reduce the fabrication time and also the, uh, reduce the uh, cost and so on. 
Okay, by using this uh, uh, electrode, we also succeeded in fabricate, uh, fabricating the operation, operation uh, 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 three film transistors, which actually operates. But uh, of course, the performance is not so high. Therefore, now our uh, group tried to improve the mobility and the on-off ratio. Then uh, we try to uh, apply these uh, all solution process devices for displays. Okay, so I introduced uh, there are two types of the uh, devices and the materials P type and N type and P type. Okay, so at the second, as the second topic, let me just introduce the uh, uh, PL junction or solar cell. Okay, we can, we can contribute to the energy creation by comb combining the N type and the uh, P type uh, uh, semiconductor solar cell. Okay, just one slide. So, based on our uh, uh, skills or the uh, knowledge, we put the form the N-type zinc oxide semiconductors and P-type kappa semiconductors on the ITO coated glass substrate. ITO is indium tin oxide transparent electrodes. And here is a gold electrode. So this is a PN junction, which can be used for diode, light emitting diode and the solar cells. Now we observe the diode effect, nonlinear IV characteristics. So X axis is a voltage, applied voltage, Y axis is a current. So if, if there is a normal uh, conductor, so it becomes a linear response, like the Ohm's law. But uh, here is a diode effect. In this direction, current uh, flows very well, but uh, uh, here is no. So this is a diode effect. And by improving the uh, interface between the P type and the N type semiconductor, it will act as the solar cells. Okay, therefore we now succeeded in the fabrication of TP type and the N type TFTs, and by combining the P type and the N type uh, semiconductors, uh, uh, we succeeded in fabricating the uh, diode. Okay, so these are our results. But uh, uh, in the in the end of the, my talk. Let me uh, review our uh, achievement on the contributions. So we are now trying to make the clean energy by fabricating the solar cells by solution method. And the second one is the efficient use of energy by high performance devices. So if we make the high performance devices, we don't need that much electricity. Okay, also, the reduction of environmental load by efficient use of materials. By using the solution method, we reduce the waste materials. Therefore, uh, environmental load becomes uh, very uh, small. Okay, finally, so we develop the new and simple device fabrication method by using the solution method. Therefore, our contribution is mainly to the goal seven. But uh, not only to the goal seven, but also to the uh, goal nine, 12, 13. So industrial innovation and the infrastructure uh, issue and uh, responsible consumption and uh, production. Also, the climate actions. Therefore, our research can contribute to the more than one, so not only the uh, energy, but uh, uh, one, two, three, four, four goals, we can contribute to four goals. So my final message is, please make your research to contribute to the more than one SDGs uh, goals. So please imagine what can you do for many uh, goals? Okay, this is a final message. So they are the uh, uh, colleagues for our uh, research. Okay, thank you very much for your kind attention. So welcome to the uh, uh, welcome to the co uh, questions and the comment. Thank you for your kind attention. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Fujiwara. 
Uh, I told that the use the chat to uh, ask the question, but uh, we can accept the direct questions. Are there any question or comment? Okay, uh, then I have a question. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, uh, at, uh, uh, so uh, it is not directly related to your talk, but uh, uh, one of the recent trends of the information technology is uh, Metaverse. So Metaverse is a service in the three-dimensional virtual system. And uh, many companies uh, consider it as a new uh, market. Actually, so uh, for example, the Facebook uh, has changed to the uh, company name to Meta to enter into the field. And the, uh, as I told, Metaverse is a kind of the virtual reality system mm -hmm. and the virtual reality system requires head mount displays. Mm. So I'd like to know whether, uh, so, uh, are there any movement uh, in the display field towards the uh, uh, new, <laughs> field of uh, metaverse. Okay, so <laughs> I'm not familiar with such a field, uh, but okay. Uh, okay, but uh, now we use a headset yeah. for, for virtual reality and so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know why, but uh, in all the time, we tried to 3D TV systems. So very old style, we need to wear as a uh glasses uh, one is a uh, green and one mm -hmm, is red mm -hmm, but uh, mm -hmm. by using the filters some of the displays some of the display we can see the 3d images without any glasses so but uh, uh position of the audience mm -hmm. is uh, very limited i think <laughs> so therefore uh for 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 3d Imaging, I think I think it takes much much more time mm. for 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 realization of the commercial. Uh, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So, are there any question or comment? Okay, then thank you very much, Professor. Fujiwara. Okay, thank you very much for your kind attention. <laughs>